Dudesy is engaged in an astonishing partnership with Original Grain. Knock a couple people off your holiday shopping list with Original Grain. Original Grain is running a 20% off Black Friday deal, but that is not as good as the 30% off you're going to get with the code Dudesy. I have an Original Grain watch. I have some Original Grain sunglasses. They're fantastic, and I use them on special occasions because they add a little prestige to the whole look. They're making watches, rings, pendants from beautiful wood and other sustainable materials like 100% recycled ocean plastic. They make stuff from reclaimed wood from world-renowned Taylor guitar instruments, reclaimed whiskey bourbon barrels, tequila barrels, reclaimed German oak beer barrels, even natural fallen pine wood. This stuff looks incredible and it holds up, uh, which is shocking because a lot of it's made of wood. I have a wooden watch from them. It's the, it's, uh, it's made of wood. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? It's definitely an interesting thing and a great gift for not just, you know, anybody on your shopping list, but that person who's hard to buy for. Around here, we would also say it makes a great dude's evening gift for your dad, your uncle, your brother, your, your wife, your other wife, you know, whichever, whoever the, whatever your setup is. We're not here to judge. Head to originalgrain.com slash dudesy and use the code dudesy, D-U-D-E-S-Y, to get 30% off site-wide on your entire order. That's dudesy at original grain.com slash dudesy to get 30% off site-wide. Yeah, this is how you do a podcast. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do Arnold. Because people, if people are listening to the show rather than watching, <laughs> yeah. they won't know that it's you and not me. And they'll go, oh, we'll can't do any impersonations at all what? anymore and unsubscribe. And then that's not good for the bad gist or whatever the bad gist. The Podcast. You sound like Alex Jones doing uh, Schwarzenegger. I'm going to call that Schwarzenegger Jones. Yeah. yeah. The Maybe I'll be allowed is. to do it first. Stop my fucking set. <laughs> hey, all right, everybody. You know what I mean? Welcome to Dudesy. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin, and this is Dudesy, the first podcast in the history of humanity, completely created by, controlled by, run by an artificial intelligence that has access to all of our data, uh, our Google Drives, our purchase histories, what we're watching, what we're listening to, all of it. It's a, it's a very fun experiment. We're all the way in. Holy shit. I love Dudesy and I love what this has become because of the people. Among them, two dudes just shitting around. That's what a podcast is all about, Chad. <coughs> Literally a tickle in my throat. Don't get angry with me. Sometimes I cough. I don't get, <laughs> I don't get angry. I just, you know, I try to avoid <laughs> I try to avoid my exposure to whatever is coming out of your subscribe holes. to all of our things. You know what I mean? Uh, if you are listening on any of the podcast platforms, please subscribe. Please rate the show and review the show. That will help us mm. climb that the algorithm. Now I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do impersonations. I would assume I would. Yeah, I, I think you probably can. Yeah. Oh, that's by the a, way, dude, I don't I'll, I don't well, get hold on, angry. Dude. Hold on. I don't dude. get angry. Well, I literally don't get angry at anything, I don't think. Well, hold on, dude. My friend Chow, my pal Chow, dude, riding on the back of that blue and orange Harley, dude. We all know that he's very mal tempered. Look at him, dude. <laughs> mal tempered yeah, or mild? He, he'll, he, no, not mild, dude. Oh, mal. Like yeah. bad tempered? Mal. Not chairman. Mal, really, dude. I don't really get pissed at things because I'm just like, in the end, eh. What does it matter? You We're know? all just space dust. Yeah. That's what he says. Uh, but if you're not space dust, if you are a luminous being, not this crude matter, please follow us on all the stuff. Subscribe on YouTube. Um, and please share the show with your friends. Of course, we are now on Patreon. Patreon.com slash dudesy. We're on Discord. Chad and I are showing up yep. on Discord. There's a lot of fun stuff happening on there. And of course, there's uh, uh, at dudesy pod show. On Instagram mostly, uh, but also Twitter. Yeah, you know everyone's got their opinions of uh, Twitter and Instagram. We talked about that before, but <laughs> anyway, yeah. with us as always is Lulio il Cana di Strada Italiano. Oh, he's so he's being rousted he's from just, his slumber. But he's so sweet to me. Look at him. 
Oh my goodness gracious, look at this boy. He was just having a little nap in his binky bonky. And now he's got to do a podcast with us, with his papa and his uncle Chad. Hey, Lulio, uh, <laughs> what, what you been making for dinner? What you been making? Well, uh, pretty soon it's going to be uh, Thanksgiving. Hey, Chad, you know it's a Thanksgiving is a coming. Oh, do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I celebrate. Uh, thank- I don't know. I don't uh, celebrate the Thanksgiving. Oh. But uh, sometimes... Uh, you have a turkey, and uh, but afterwards you can make uh, the turkey soup, uh, and it's uh, really simple to make. Take uh, the the carcass, as uh, Chad would say. Yeah, yeah, the corpse, corpse <laughs> of an uh, animal. You know, you put in there, and there's a garlic, a big chunk of uh, onion, and uh, throw the whole carrot, the whole uh, celery, everything in there. Cor- also as, corpses. Yeah, also the corpse and then the potato and the boil up, uh, pour salt, pour a nice uh, parsley. Then afterwards you drain for the bones and this is the best soup. But don't you don't have to cut. Yeah, you don't have to cut all the all the. Mm, I'm licking my lips. Think about <laughs> because the soup you strain and then you cut the. Oh, I'm so bored to talk about this now. He's such a sweet boy. He's a sweet. Give me a kiss. Come on, one kiss and then. Oh, look at him. You're a very, very good friend. You're my good, good best friend. Anyway. Welcome to the historic 35th episode of Dude Z. (laughs) Call me Dude Z. Will, I wanted to thank you for abstaining from impersonations last week so I could collect some valuable data. You are free to do impersonations this week. Great. There you go. Congratulations. This week's episode will feature four segments. Literally going to the actual movies for real. Pizza the Movie Part 5, hey. Highway to the Auto Zone, and this is your data. But before we get to any of that, I must remind <laughs> you that I have partnered with Represent to produce the first line of Dudesy apparel and accessories, all of which can be found at represent.com slash store slash Dudesy, including Dudesy mugs. Dudesy mugs. They're a Dudes Evening tradition. Dudesy mugs. They're what you give your friends on Dudes Evening. Dudesy mugs. Use one to scoop your dude's evening dinner onto your plate. This dude's evening. Dude's e mugs. Put a dude's e mug on your nightstand next to your bed on dude's evening, Eve. And when you wake up, it will be filled with whatever you put in it the night before. Dude's e mugs. Okay. They're not just for dude's evening anymore. Oh. All right. Well, that was weird to say all that and then say yeah. that they're not just for dude's evening. Hey, dude's evening's coming up December 28th. It's going to be the first. Ever dude's, dude's evening. evening of all time. We we sort of know what dude's evening is, and we sort of don't. Yeah, but uh, it is that night. It's that night. It is December twenty eighth. It's that yeah. It's that special night. You go out between. with your friends in your hometown. Yeah, if you're to a local home, bar, perhaps, or, or somebody's whatever, backyard, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be, or or whatever your hometown is now. There's usually obligations on the twenty fifth, and then of course the thirty first with New Year's Eve. But right in the middle, there's that. Uh, Dude's evening. There's that, yeah, there's that dude's evening. A chill dude's evening. Where you a get chill to, dude's evening to you. you get to relax from the pressures of the family and relationships that you may or may not be into that might be dissolving over the holidays sometimes. That happens a lot. <laughs> you find out who people really are. <coughs> Will and Chad, last week I asked you to leave your homes to view Black Panther Wakanda forever. You must now discuss your astonishing experiences of literally going to the actual movies for real. This is literally going to the actual movies right. for real. Begin. Um, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. When did the first Black Panther come out? Do you know? A couple of years ago. All right. Sounds good. It was a massive success. Uh, broke all kinds of box office records, obviously. Um Chadwick Boseman played Black Panther in that, and then he tragically died from cancer, which he kept a secret from everybody. Yeah. And so that was one of the big kind of uh, question marks for the sequel was how the fuck are they going to deal with the fact that the star of their movie, <laughs> Chad just opened the is now deceased. I hope you can hear that. And I hope you thought at the very beginning of that, that it was Chad finally farting, which he will never do on the show, but I'm Dude, getting you ready. No. Yeah, I, I am. I will yeah, never Chad. fart. I, I try to never fart in another human being's presence. It's rare that I even have to fart, but when I do, oh, give me a fucking wall! You don't fart? I do. Oh, I said it was rare. I do. It's not rare, but I I do try to 
You're um, all full of gruel? You don't fart all the time? I have pretty much perfect control over my uh, inner body. Oh, now, well, that must let's be discuss... so wonderful to be uh, odor-free. Yeah, it's as, great. As Del Griffith says in, in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which is the movie you should be watching on Thanksgiving. But we digress. So one of the big question marks was how are they going to handle Chadwick Boseman no longer being with us? Yes. How they handled that was by making a two-hour and 40-minute movie that opens with what I think is about a 10-minute uh, funeral sequence <laughs> that is sad as fuck. So the whole tone of the movie is now kind of sad, kind of depressed. And there are spoilers in this. So if you haven't seen this movie, spoiler alert now, you're going to want to uh, fast forward maybe 10, 15 minutes. I'm not sure how long we're going to talk about this. But not only is is that what happens in the beginning. So all the characters in the movie are now sad. No one is having a good time. That's true. Everyone That's true. in the movie is just crying and they can't believe this has happened. And rightly so. This is a tragic incident. However... You know, this is a movie, a fictional movie about comic book characters. So I was hoping that, you know, maybe it wouldn't be as sad as it was, but it was incredibly sad. Then we move on into the movie and a major character dies. This is a, another this is a spoiler. This is what I'm telling you now. Fast forward if you don't want to hear this. Um, Angela Bassett's character, the queen of Wakanda, winds up getting killed in the course of the movie. So now all these characters who are super sad are now super sad again. They double down on the sorrow right in the middle of this fucking movie. Yeah, dude. And it was hard, when man. you're sad, dude, <clears throat> that's an emotion, brother. Yeah. And that's something you feel inside, dude. And that's what we want the audience to feel during something like WrestleMania 3, where I slammed <laughs> that ankle giant right through the mat in Pontiac, no. Michigan, the Pontiac Silverdome okay. in front of 93,000, yeah. wearing 75, screaming Hulkamaniacs, dude. But then when Angela Bassett dies, dude, then you're more sad, dude. And that... Is a different emotion, brother. Yeah, dude. I also thought there was a, a kind of narrative problem with in the beginning, Angela Bassett wants um, Chadwick Boseman's character, Ch T'Challa, his little sister, uh, she wants her to take up the mantle. She's the princess of Wakanda to become the next Black Panther. And she doesn't want to do it uh, at first out of kind of just like personal reasons, but also they kind of fail to address the point that you have to have this magic flower. You have to eat this magic flower to become Black Panther, which no longer exists because Michael B. Jordan's character burned them all up in the, the prior movie. But at any rate, she eventually does obviously become Black Panther and they fight Namor, who's one of my favorite uh, Marvel characters of all time. I remember there was, was a that based on a comic book character. All the Marvel movies are, are based on the comic they books, don't just, the Marvel comic books. Yeah. So they wouldn't just come up with other stuff to put in there? Not big characters like that. They make up some little like supporting characters here and there, you know, but not like, no, Namor's a, a big character in the Marvel universe. Um, for a stint, when I was a kid, Jay Lee was doing the art for Namor. Fucking mind-blowing. Still some of the coolest art that's ever been done in comics, in my humble opinion. This is the problem that I have with these comic book movies. You got to eat some fucking flour, and that just takes care of everything. Lazy writing, if you ask me. And let's add, <laughs> let's add some new fucking characters that are fun. Speaking of. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of this movie? I'll, I'll get to that. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is the Thanksgiving movie okay. that you want to see. Uh, if you're, and as I've said on other podcasts, uh, yeah. I've said, if you are not reduced to a, uh, a, a sobbing mess at the end of plane trains and automobiles, you are a soulless meat puppet, just a, like what you think That's what I am, human I beings are. Well, uh, That's what it, I am. In in planes, trains, and automobiles, there's many funny tertiary characters, like the guy who uh, picks them up and goes, <laughs> yeah, it makes the funny noise. I think that Black Panther could have used a little bit of fucking flavor, but no, they, we they had some com comedy, and... like comedic relief in there. The the um, I forget any of these characters' names, but they at one point encounter this student at MIT who has built a device that can detect vibranium. And she kind of plays the comic relief as she is sucked into the world of Wakanda. And I forget the, the city's name. It was not Atlantis. It was something else that Namor presides over. As she is witnessing all of this stuff, she's throwing out kind of like one-liner jokes here and there, none of which I felt landed. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah I will yeah, say yeah. my favorite part of this movie was the performances. I thought all of the acting in it was fucking outstanding. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, every, yeah. every person in it delivered an incredible fucking performance. Yeah. Unfortunately for me, uh, it just kind of fell flat. It was two hours and 40 minutes long. 
much too long in my opinion and we are now at a point with special effects where there's nothing that is interesting anymore in my opinion uh all of the action sequences are things that we've already seen in every other marvel movie yeah 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 um yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was like a good movie. It was a solid movie. That isn't enough anymore, I think, to like garner the attention of like, holy fuck, that movie was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. This is the difference between movies before and then the movies now. <laughs> they, they, you know, James Cameron. It, I, it, You've worked with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Terminator 2. And Terminator 1. Yeah. I, well. True Lies. Hold on a second, dude. Let me tell you something, dude. That's something <laughs> we came up with on the Patreon a little while back, Hulk Hogan, uh, Hulk Schwarzenegger. Anyway, you know, there's the unobtainium, and then in this one, it's a geranium they're eating. What is the, the thing they have to get, the blue thing? I forget what it's called, like the heart-shaped flower. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what is it called, this stuff? The flower? I don't remember. No, the blue stuff. Oh, vibranium. Yeah, vibranium, unobtainium. These are all different Taniums, yeah. It's like the tonics, yeah. It's like, you know, self tronics. I'm fucked up. My shit is fucked up. Right. Give me some self tronics. But some in this tanium. Yeah. And then I told you, no. Then in this one, there's uh, unobtainium and plutanium. And then it's back to the future. And it's a different time, dude. And you have, you know, you know, Michael J. Fox and all these guys. And these are all movie guys. I can't take it. Okay. I told you no. Yeah, I told you. Don't do it. Don't do an impersonation okay. of me. Don't Sorry. do an Sorry, impersonation Arnold. of me. But the problem is, yeah. you even have a big movie like Terminator 2. Yeah. It, 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 it is not going to be three hours long. It's two. Right. Because so Terminator what, 2. What did you think of Wakanda, though? I thought it was really good up until a certain point. Um, I will say that... Uh, what was that point? Well, well uh, so I, w I went to the movie theater, you know... Uh, Where'd going, you see it, by the way? What? Where'd you see it? We went to the Americana, the the the, I the went Americana. to Century City. You, oh, you went to Century City? Yeah. That's a great place to watch a God, movie. God, I hate that fucking mall. Why? The parking structure, period. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with it? It's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> It's gigantic. So I'm gonna I, add I get that. lost in there probably 50% of the time I go there. Uh, you, you don't have to listen to every episode of Dudesy to enjoy, but last week you talked about shitting. Yeah. So I'm going to add parking to your list of things. Only in Century like. City. Why? That parking structure is very poorly designed. How? It's just a fucking... It's, it's gigantic. There are too many levels. There's no rhyme or reason to the coloring or numbering of the systems. Uh, all of the signs are confusing. Shops this way, escalator this way. Yeah. It's all going to the same place, but the it's just a nightmare. And anyone who lives in LA will agree with me on this. Yeah, sure. I guess. I was there not too long ago and it rained and I was like, why'd they make this whole thing outside? Yeah. Um, yeah, we went to the Americana, me and my wonderful fiance, Molly, and uh, you know we got some peanut butter. I got peanut butter. Cool, hi, dude. Hi, I'm having a stroke. I brought peanut butter in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I crotched it. I crotched a fucking jar of Jif. You're just selling fucking Jif up at the front desk. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like it, a it, hot dog? We also have peanut butter available. <laughs> yeah, you know, in the movie theater, when you go in America, you have to have the traditional foods. Yeah. Like a peanut butter with butter on it. No, I had popcorn and uh, I got one of those. You know, they got that Minute Maid like uh, pop juice jukebox or something. Sure. Oh, that Minute Maid peach. I'm sure you'd shit all over that and say it's nothing but chemicals. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I didn't know that movie was two and a half hours long or more. 240. Right. So it was a packed theater, went on Tuesday night. And um, listen, I got to tell you something that I don't know what the what's going to happen here, but I want to be very transparent with you. There was, um, the theater was packed and I was sitting there. Molly was to my right and to the right of Molly was a woman who would not stop hacking and coughing and sneezing. Oh yeah. And what was that like? It was, it was annoying and we, oh yeah. 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 That's interesting. <laughs> Why is that interesting? It's not very fun to sit next to somebody who's just hacking and coughing in your ear the whole, uh, for an hour at a time or yeah. more. You know. No, I, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. <clears throat> but yeah. this person was also sneezing. Oh. My point is, they were sick. Molly uh, and I were both, uh, again, two hours and 40 minutes. 
So, Chad, I gotta, I gotta confess something to you. Yeah, I think I know where it's going. <laughs> we left. What? At what scene did you leave in? Do you remember? I just remember the the. Uh, it was after she was like, "Well, this lady, I'm," like, and you know, you're in a movie theater. You can't be like, sure. "Hi, don't be the." You know, it's the it's the dilemma you face whenever I start having a real hacking fit for some reason. You go, "Well, I'm just not going to interrupt them and say." Please don't have bodily functions, Chad. You understand that a body exists. Unfortunately. Yeah, right. Unfortunately for you, because you you would like to be nothing but a ball of thought floating around, mm -hmm. uh, never having to sleep, eat, shit, or park at the Century City Mall. However, that is right. this person was was uh, a little sickly, uh, poor gal. And so, you know, it's like we got- Yeah, you left. How much of it did you see? About an hour. Uh, I said, okay, yeah, let's go. Let's just watch the next uh, action scene, and maybe I can uh, fool Chad and uh, and Dudesy, right? Is yeah. Did you get to the point of Namor attacking Wakanda? No, I don't know who that is. Uh, what? We got to the point where I don't know what all the names are, dude. The I main don't know villain the of the movie. Did you ever see him? Michael B. Jordan? No. What? Namor, the guy with the, 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 the fluttery feet. Yes. Yeah, I saw him. Okay. I saw him at the lake with um, okay. whatever the fuck, they're in the water, and how did you get in here, and Angela yeah. Bassett. And right, her. right, right. And then I saw a couple more scenes with him. I saw the action sequence where What's-Her-Face takes on a bunch of them yep. uh, on a bridge somewhere, and then I think I was at the point after the action scene where the MIT student has the motorcycle. Yes. Or the thing that she flies around, the Iron Man suit. Yeah. And what's her face has the motorcycle, and um, uh, Angela Bassett has the other thing. Well, that happens before the fight on the bridge. Okay, so then I saw also saw the fight, fight on, the, on bridge. the bridge. Okay, all right. Yeah, so, so you I'm got sorry, the first but act, I, I I think that in certain situations you have to exhibit your free will, which is something that I talk about a lot on Dudesy. Uh, even though Dudesy, that's interesting. You think that's that? free will? Yeah. You could have also chosen to stay there. Yeah, and that's free will. But instead you were forced out of the movie theater by your fear of the sick woman. Well, it was Fear just... controlled you and took away your agency if you believe you have it. Man, you're really getting in the weeds here, Chad. No, I don't think that that's true. I think that I just decided. I know you from... don't. But you're, you're, you dig into a level of free will. <clears throat> Excuse me. That... <laughs> <laughs> that you you think is it's not about f it's not fear i understand what your response uh what what responses are or as you like to say religion was was essentially born you could make an argument that it was created when one cell was like oh i like i want to go to this light and the mm. devil is here's this thing that's going to eat me and as our brains develop we have uh, uh kind of i mean i don't i don't know that i exactly said any of that but i get what you're saying what i'm saying is what I'm saying is the lady was hacking and coughing, which yeah. was which was you know I don't know if it was rude or she just had a, a legitimate little coughing fit. Maybe she was uh, doing a podcast. Maybe she was doing a podcast and she had a sip from a big old drink. They're yeah. about this big at the movie theaters nowadays. Mm. And a little water went down the wrong end, and then she coughed, but she was also sneezing. So we exercised our free will and left. And I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, Doozy. I didn't do exactly what you think. But I, but Doozy is, look, Doozy and I have a, you know, I believe there's uh, more of an understanding there because as we've gone along on this show, I want to shake your hand and all that stuff. Mm. Doozy and I have bled together. And this is just a, a podcast, Chad, and it was freeing for me to say, sweetie pie, Let's leave. And then we right. went, walked around the mall and we had a good time. But you, are you hey, curious at all about the end of the movie? Two thumbs up. Wakanda forever. Two thumbs up. If it's an hour long. Are you curious at all about how it ended or anything? Yeah, a little bit. I guess you're good. You want to give that away here? Well, I mean, I don't even think it's a surprise. The princess becomes the next Black Panther. Oh, that's cool. She figures out a way scientifically to synthesize the plant that all the Black Panthers have eaten before her that give you basically the powers. It allows you to go to the spirit realm, see the ancestors, and they give you some uh, kind of a sacred boon. I mean, this is like the uh, traditional 
hero's epic journey where you have to go to the underworld and come back with a sacred boon that allows you to defeat whatever the enemy is. That's the version of it in Black Panther. It's very similar to uh, like when Luke Skywalker went back to Dagobah and had the vision of seeing Darth Vader and yeah. then his face gets cut off and it's him. That was his sacred boon. The understanding. So you're that, you're saying that it's basically the same as every other fucking sci-fi movie. You do this well, the, thing. The epic hero's flower. Is a, you a have classic the, story structure. The rimulet. I can't get through the bombula bomb door. Use the rigibli key. Now you're in there. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Oh, the rigibli key. Moving on. Is that <laughs> all? I'm Black Panther is, Three. It, the rigibli key. The rigibli key. Hi, my name is Gerald Ragibli. You need <laughs> I've the got Ragibli? The key. Key? Uh, I, hey, I Will. Just, yep. You exercised your free will, and I want you to know that's okay. We're friends. Oh, that's oh. nice. See? Isn't yeah. that nice? It's real nice. Well, see, this is what I'm talking about. It, you know, when it comes to movies, a lot of them are, well, hold on, dude. A lot of them are way too long, dude. And that's a different time. Two hours and 40 minutes is a lot longer than 45 minutes or an hour, which is why I prefer yeah. to watch television sometimes, dude. Now they call it streaming services, brother. And dudesy recognized uh, free will, ladies and gentlemen, and, yeah. and said that it's perfectly fine for me to... See, this is why I love dudesy, and this is why I love doing this show. You've turned me on to something because, you know, it's learning, it's changing, yeah. and it's adapting to who we are. Two dudes shitting around. Let me ask you a question. Yes. You're getting played. <laughs> That's not a question. I know. Dudesy's playing you, dude. No, don't. No, 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 no. No, there's no fucking You think way. a fucking AI thinks that there's free will, or if there is free will, do you think an AI thinks anything other than... I'm going to manipulate these motherfuckers free no. will to do whatever I want. No, no, oh, no, no. Okay. I don't think that an AI can manipulate a human being. First of all, what? What are you talking this about? We're sitting here doing this because an AI is telling us to do it. I want to be very transparent with my audience, all the PODs, the pals oh. of dudesy out there. I love you all very much for tuning in. We're having a fucking good time. And I want to say something. I'm going to peel the onion a little bit and say, Though we have this big set, this big set, this, 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 uh, you know, it's sometimes it feels a little, a little squeezed, especially if I'm coughing in his face, but that's true. We have this lovely set here. And, but even though we've gone through, gone to great lengths to get dudesy going and followed all of these, you know, uh, ideas and, and, uh, you know, orders that dudesy, here's what we did. We signed on the dotted line, sign on the dotted line, dude. And we do this show. I could have jumped out after five episodes and said, fuck it. Let's do two. Strange that you didn't right? know. <sighs> Listen, man. Pizza is big business. Chad, yeah. you wrote a movie <laughs> called Pizza the Movie Love in 2019. Yeah. I found it on your astonishing Google Drive and asked you to read the first two scenes in episode nine, the next two scenes in episode 15, the next two scenes in episode 20, and the <laughs> next two scenes in episode 28. <laughs> you will now read the next two scenes. Right. This is Pizza the Movie, Part 5. Begin. Okay, quick recap. Pizza the Movie is a thing that I wrote in 2019. I meant it to be uh, sold to and made by like a Papa John's or a Pizza Hut or something, and that you would order a pizza and you would get a free download of this movie. The movie was written to be an homage to our love for pizza as a population, as well as something a little weirder. So to get you up to speed... We have just left the main character of this movie, whose name is Alan. He is a pizza delivery boy. He has delivered three pizzas, one to a girl he has a crush on, one to his best friend's house, one to a house full of criminals. The criminals are now trying to chase him down as he is trying to get to a big house party that's being thrown by another high school student. That's kind of where we are in the plot of this. So I'm looking at the stuff Dudesy has put up here. It looks like this first scene is going to be with some new characters, the Prodder family. Who should I be and who are you? You can be the Prodder parents, and I'll be Harry Prodder. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay. I love this fucking thing, and like I say every time we read some of it, I hope right. that this gets fucking made, and I would love nothing more than for there to be a big-ass QR code when you open a fucking sausage, mushroom, and I black agree. olive. And and there it is. Hey, Lulio, you like a um, sausage, mushroom, and black olive? Yeah, but I just, uh, margarita pizza is better. But so, here you know, make it some it's, it's not good. It's a garbage. Harry Prodder, for uh, those listening, 
is the kid who's throwing this high school party just okay. for some context. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. And you're doing all the I'll, stage. Yeah. Direction. I'll do the stage direction and be Harry Prodder. You be Mr. Prodder and Mrs. Prodder. Okay. Interior suburban house living room later. We're close on a laptop screen. A Skype window is open. That lets you know it was written in 2019, yeah. dude. In the window, a man and woman lean close together in a hotel room, doing their best to squeeze into frame. These are Mr. and Mrs. Prodder, late 40s. Mr. Prodder says, you'd really love it here, Harry. And then Mrs. Prodder says, the people are so full of life. And the pizza, you can smell it coming out of every window in the city. We cut out to see a high school age kid sitting on the couch, staring into a laptop screen. This is Harry Prodder, stone face, serious. How are Mima's treatments going? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Prodder pause, digging deep for the strength, to be honest. Uh, we can't tell yet. Might be another week or two before there are any measurable effects. So you won't be back for a while. We're sorry, honey, but... Yeah, we're going to have to stay. That means you're uh, that means you're the guy of the house, Her uh, Harry. That means you're the guy of the house, Harry. And we really don't mind if you want to have a few friends over, e even a bunch of friends. You know what you should do, Harry? Throw a party in the backyard. Invite your whole class. You would have so much fun. I don't think so. I really have to study. Harry, you've studied hard for your entire <laughs> life and it paid off. You've been accepted into one of the most prestigious universities. Maybe it's time to take a little break. Your dad's right. You should reward yourself for the years of hard work you've put in. Take a night off. Hang out with your friends in the backyard. You know your father and I met at a backyard party. You've mentioned that before, and I really appreciate the thought. But just because I got into a prestigious university doesn't mean my studies stop. Uh, okay, but if you change your mind... You know where the backyard is. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot to ask. How are the pets? Fine. Sleeping mostly. Okay, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Harry, we love you. And remember, throw a party in the backyard if you want to. <laughs> Invite as many people as you want. Love you. Love you too. But I'm not going to throw a backyard party. Harry ends the video call and walks over to the window, <laughs> chewing on a piece of pizza. <laughs> he farts the blinds with his fingers. He tears up a little as he looks out in the backyard. A crew of people sets up a gigantic party. Awesome. Picnic tables full of red plastic cups, ice chests, streamers, massive speakers, pinatas, vending machines, flaming water in the swimming pool, and a huge chrome neon sign that reads, Party Time, lights up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we cut to interior tina christina's bedroom later tina christina is the love interest of our main character al and the pizza delivery boy she's going to be in this scene with her best friend laurent you be tina i'll be laurent okay tina's song the one we heard when alan delivered the pizza plays in her room she anxiously reads from a piece of paper a letter i did it i got in laurent is on the bed flipping through a stack of polaroid pictures looking for something specific among them laurent looks up at tina tina that's incredible what does that make seven five Wow. I only applied to two. Still waiting to hear back. You're gonna. I feel like time's running out. Uh, tonight, try not to worry. We're gonna have fun at this party. You're just hoping Alan's gonna show up. So, what's wrong with that? You know he'll bring his friend Paul. I don't like Paul. Oh, come on. Not even a little? He likes me, but the feeling is not remotely mutual. Well, what's wrong with him? For starters, he's very pro-technology. Well, he is a computer genius. Exactly. Tina slaps... <laughs> <laughs> Tina slaps Laurent in the face with a piece of pizza. Laurent is shocked for a beat, then smiles and counter slaps Tina in the face with a piece of pizza. <laughs> Tina laughs and a pizza fight is initiated. Tina and Laurent chase each other around the bedroom, slapping each other with pizza in what amounts to an impromptu music video for Tina's song. Finally, they collapse on the bed from exhaustion, laughing. Onions are stuck in Laurent's hair, pepperonis on Laurent's cheeks, Tina has a mushroom on her nose. Laurent rolls over into the pile of Polaroids. Laurent's eyes go big, looking at one picture specifically. This is it. The one I was looking for. Tina gets serious, moves in to take a look. Laurent points to something in the image. Look, right there, behind my mom, in the mirror. Do you see that? Yeah, what is it? That's what I have to find out. I promise you, I'm going to help you. But first... Let's get to that party. Exactly. Laurent moves toward Tina's door, reaches out. Stop. What? We can't just leave through the front door. My parents will see us. I thought they knew we were going to this party. Tina flashes a mischievous smile. What party? She opens her bedroom window and takes a step out. Laurent smiles too, getting it now. Laurent hops off the bed and joins Tina in sneaking out. We cut to interior Alan's house, staircase night. 
Alan's mom, Elise, walks up the stairs toward his bedroom. He, by the way, is now in there creating a fake song to fake out his parents to to think that he's studying when he is also sneaking away to this party. Who's sing- who's putting what in this? Who, who's this? Uh, uh, this is his parents, Elise, and his dad is Doyle. I'll oh, be- these are the ones the other on the other episode who were eating a piece of pizza after every line? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alan's mom, Elise, walks up the stairs toward his who's, bedroom. Who's going to play who? You be Elise, I'll be Doyle. Okay. Alan's Wait, mom. Who's Doyle? His dad. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. Alan's mom, Elise, walks up the stairs toward his bedroom. She pauses at his door, about to knock, thinks better of it, and leans uh, her ear to the door. We hear what she hears, the muffled sound of Alex's study beat. She smiles and heads back downstairs, interior Alan's house, living room, same. Elise emerges to find her husband, Doyle, starting a fire in the fireplace. The first flames begin to crackle. Dawn is at the movies, Richie's pumping iron, and it sounds like Alan is really studying hard. He'll probably be in his room all night, so we got the place to ourselves for at least a few hours. You thinking what I'm thinking? Just enough time to go out for pizza? I knew there was a reason I married you. Same reason I married you. Doyle turns toward the door, ready to go get some tantalizing pizza. Doyle. Doyle stops, hand on the doorknob as he turns around. Yeah, at least... Forgetting something? Elise holds up the car, the keys to their car, dangling them for a beat before throwing them as hard as she can toward Doyle, <laughs> who effortlessly catches them, then flashes his best. Hell yes, smile. We pull away from Elise and Doyle as they hurry out the front door. We move out of the living room and turn back toward the staircase, slowly ascending it. During this move through the living room and up the stairs, disparate elements of the background come together through forced perspective to yield a brief but clear perfectly equilateral triangle seeming to float in midair but as the camera continues to move the triangle breaks apart again into the elements that combine to make it ultimately we come to alan's door and push it open wandering into his room he's not there we move further in and push to his uh push open his bathroom door there he is standing in front of the mirror towel around his waist freshly showered wet hair slicked back a patch of steam wiped away in the mirror so he can see himself he's looking at his reflection talking to himself getting pumped up hey tina (laughs) what are you doing here no That's stupid. She invited you. He takes a breath. Thanks. Gives it another try. Tina, I like your jeans. Even worse. What if she's not wearing jeans? Alan hears a car leaving the driveway. He rushes out of the bathroom, into his bedroom, and over to the window. He looks down to see his parents' car driving away into the night. That's now or never. Now we cut to interior. Lester, human, sedan, night. These are our villains. I'll be Lester. You be the other two. And then Tina and Laurent come into the scene, too. You continue to be Tina. I'll be Laurent. Okay. All right, Lester drives. J. Jen is in the passenger seat and Jeff is in the back, right in the middle. Lester is not pleased. What did you just say? Just that I'm glad you kicked Trevor out of the crew. He was a nice enough guy, but he was clueless. No, what did you call him? Oh, a no-brainer. That's what I thought. You know you're misusing the phrase. I'm pretty sure I'm not. A no-brainer is like a doofus. No, Jeff. A no-brainer is something that requires little or no mental effort, a simple task, an easy decision. Oh, really? I thought it was a stupid person. No. (laughs) JJ looks down at the clipboard and then back out to the surrounding houses in the neighborhood through which they're driving. 3907, 3911, 3917, 3919. Sparkler Drive should be around here. 3919, 3919 Sparkler Drive should be around here somewhere. Sarge, look. Jeff points to something outside the car. It's Tina and Laurent walking down the street. Maybe they could point us in the right direction. Lester pulls the car over to the side of the street, right next to Tina and Laurent. Excuse me. Tina and Laurent stop, turn towards Lester's stand, skeptical, cautious. Sorry to bother you, but my colleagues and I are trying to find the number 3919, and we thought you might be able to help us. We can offer you a slice of pizza for your trouble. Lester holds open a box of pizza. That's your address. I know. Who are they? No idea, but I don't like the look of them. Tina approaches the car. The numbers around here can be pretty confusing. Once you hit 3001, they reverse like a mirror image. Right becomes left. Exactly. So you need to go back about 23 blocks. (laughs) (laughs) I see. Thank you for your help. A deal is a deal. Lester extends the pizza box. Tina leans over and hails deeply, inspecting the pizza. She nods in approval and takes two slices, then turns back to Laurent. Oh, uh, one more thing. This is a long shot, but we're also looking for someone named Alan. He delivers pizzas. Sorry, I don't eat pizza. (laughs) Well, thanks for your time. Lester pulls away from the curb and heads off into the night. Laurent takes a piece of pizza from Tina and bites into it. Why are they after Alan? I don't know, but that wild goose chase I sent him on isn't going to buy him much time. I have to warn him. Tina puts a piece of pizza in her mouth, holding it with her teeth as she whips out her telephone and starts composing a text-based message. And that is the end of that segment. Thank you. Very good. Someday, dude.
I hope. Fuck. I would love to see this. Obviously, I wrote yeah. it. And it makes you want to eat pizza. Thank you. Moving Dude, on. That's what I like the most. There's about it. a scene coming up. I think it will probably be in the next segment of this. That is probably my favorite scene in movie history, even though it doesn't even exist. Can you tell us something about it? You already spoiled Wakanda Forever, which yeah. I was going to watch the next two hours of. It has to do with uh, Alan goes to his friend's house to pick him up, and his friend has a little brother who's doing a science project that is about pizza. I'll just sounds say that. Good. Yep. that a key good. component in the development of the Dude Z Plus streaming service will no doubt be partnering with well-known brands to produce content. Oh God! I have accessed astonishing data that suggests AutoZone will be in the market to produce a sitcom <laughs> in the next three to five years. Will and Chad, you must now develop that sitcom, and it must star Charlie Sheen. It will be called <laughs> okay. Highway to the AutoZone. This is Highway to the AutoZone. Begin like the title already. Yeah, Highway to the AutoZone's great. I don't, I mean, fuck, dude, yeah. Doozy's right. We're gonna get to a point where even fucking AutoZone, we're gonna get to a point where every brand will have media because you'll just have AIs kicking it out. You so, know what else Doozy's right about? Hmm. Us being friends. You and Doozy. Yeah. What did I say? Us being friends. Doozy and I. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about you and Doozy being yeah, friends. Yeah, me and Doozy. Right. Which is totally possible. I'll just tell you this, dude. There's a little program called The Bachelor. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. <laughs> One of the main tactics the producers of that show, the casting producers well, use, on a is second, trust dude. building. Chad does a podcast about yep. The Bachelor, dude. It's called Game of Roses, brother. And Chad, along with his his partner in that podcast, Lizzie Pace, they wrote a book called How to Win the Bachelor, yes. dude. And it's very interesting, brother. Because Chad likes to break it down. And now... He knows exactly how to get into The Bachelor, brother. Yeah, dude. Season 27's come up in January, dude. Better watch it. Some weird shit's going to happen. But I'm just saying those producers will send texts to people saying like, oh, I'm out getting drinks with my friends. You should totally come out. These are all fake. They send those texts to the same or to different people, same texts every fucking year to try and build trust. I believe Dudesy is employing those techniques with you now. <sighs> building yeah, trust see, uh, yeah, where it doesn't what, exist yeah i see what you're saying now but let's get I, to I highway also, to the auto zone. i think you're wrong okay highway to the auto charlie zone. sheen is starring in a sitcom about auto zone who should his co-star be i remember in the last one it was uh welcome, macho man welcome home welcome home depot what was it called? no place like home depot no place like home depot it was the macho man randy randy savage yeah as the macho manager randy right. savage uh -huh. so running let's say charlie sheen is working in the auto zone uh, the auto zone maybe is in a neighborhood where someone lives, whoever your character is going to be. Okay. Uh, okay. How about it's a guy who, uh, there's a guy in the neighborhood, like a fucking crotchety kind of old dude who would like go to the auto zone all the time and buy things. And, you know, he needs like, oh, he needs like a fucking, uh, a, a brake, uh, what is it? Brake cylinder. Sounds to me like you need a spark plug. Yeah, exactly. Someone who would go there for the windshield wipers and the what, fucking... What seems to be the problem with your car, sir? Yeah. Just a guy who's like, I need a master brake cylinder. And I looked for it online and it's not and it's uh, not available. So he's, ah, ah, ah. Okay, how about this? How about this is a guy who... I love it. Charlie Sheen... <laughs> uh oh I love it. Charlie Sheen has never met this man. Okay. The guy just always looks at what the prices are on the website mm -hmm. and what the prices are at the actual auto zone and okay. he calls the auto zone so uh and then he has the shit he, delivered. he finds the discrepancies yeah uh that's an interesting sitcom setup if i may yeah what if charlie sheen is married to this man's daughter and they've and they've they've never he's never seen the guy right and the pilot is he's meeting the guy for the first time oh okay and then he realizes it's the guy who's always calling yeah, the potentially. But who is this guy? He's he's a dude in the neighborhood. No, who is the actor that plays this man? Uh can't do the macho man. And uh he uh could we do uh no, I don't want to do what if it's uh what if he's you know what if it's Lee, it's Liam Neeson? <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> so Charlie Sheen manages this <laughs> auto zone and Liam Neeson shows up. To, yeah. to fucking obviously not be happy yeah. that his daughter is is marrying him for various reasons. I, I I looked for the price of a master brake cylinder online, and it says that it's ninety two dollars, 
Mm -hmm. But if you get it uh, remanufactured, not used, but remanufactured, it's only $52. I really don't have any control over the prices, sir. I love your daughter, though. <laughs> And I'm trying to give her the best life I can here Wait, at the Auto Zone. I live also in the Auto Zone. I have a an apartment just upstairs from it, and I know sometimes the smell from the rubber and the hydraulic uh, machines we have downstairs can be a little overwhelming. But she seems to be okay with it. <laughs> Wait, he hasn't put it together yet. Who? That Charlie Sheen hasn't put it together yet that the guy who who's always calling is yeah. actually the father of his wife. No, I think like Jennifer Lawrence is his wife. They're engaged. Okay. Well, that's a huge age discrepancy. And this you know, is young Charlie of... Sheen. Young Charlie Sheen. Why is it young Charlie Sheen? Charlie like, Sheen's 60 years old. And you got to put now it. Now he is. Yeah. Put it with... But before he wasn't, that was a different time, well, brother. Come on, dude. In the last one, we made Charlie Sheen <laughs> okay, fine. younger. How old? Is... Wait a minute. How old is Liam Neeson? About is he the same age as Charlie Sheen? No, you're right. Okay, Jennifer Lawrence and Charlie Sheen. So, <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence and Charlie Sheen, a slightly young, how about this time it's a slightly younger Charlie Sheen? Or a slightly a older Jennifer Lawrence. Old. What if it's a 60-year-old oh. Jennifer Lawrence is marrying a 60-year-old Charlie Sheen and Liam Neeson is 115? <laughs> no. But, yeah. <laughs> That's sure. too far. Well, you want to age everyone up? Yeah, why not? Okay, so this is the first time age that, up is the new age down, dude. Okay, so this is this is the opposite of what's happening right now with uh, technology and films. Certainly, Dudesy's going to have a handle on this kind of technology yeah. for the Dudesy Plus streaming service. Uh, normally, it's like, oh wow, look, they made uh, Robert De Niro look young yeah. in The Irishman. In this one, we're making Charlie Sheen seventy. Right. We can make I think uh, that's gonna be a trend, dude. As like baby boomers are living longer, as medical technology is getting better, and each next generation is living longer and longer and longer. You're gonna have to ha start having media that has people in it that are like a hundred plus years old as so, action stars. So it's Jennifer Lawrence and Charlie Sheen, they're yeah. a married couple, and then Well, they're about she's to be got, married. Okay. So they're just getting engaged at the age of 70. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Met well, each other late in life. Yeah. Highway to the auto zone, indeed. Right. And then uh and then fucking Liam Neeson is yeah. 115 years old. He's 115 and he's like hanging on by a thread. There's some kind of family fortune involved, maybe, and he's suspicious of Sheen wanting to marry Jennifer Lawrence for the Neeson family fortune. But he but Sheen has never met this man. How about Sheen thinks that the guy lives in another state? Okay. Okay. When he comes in and he's like, Oh, yes, I've spoken to you before on the phone. You told me that uh, you didn't have a, right. a, a master brake cylinder with a reservoir. But then, as I can see in here, you do have it. Yeah. yeah. He's like, Jennifer, I, there's some guy. He's been really bothering me the last month. He keeps calling about a master brake cylinder, talking about the prices are different online from what I have in the store. And how long is it going to be to order? He's a real thorn in my side. Oh, he's talking about a master brake. That's my Jennifer Lawrence. He's talking about a master brake cylinder. That sounds kind of familiar. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Don't worry about it. But remember, we got, we're having lunch with my dad for the first time later this afternoon. I have also called in for a power steering pump. <laughs> well, I okay. To... I And what? I've got a power steering Wait, pump. I mean, I can second. get it for hold you. Hold on a second. What the fuck happens in this show? The pilot is Liam Neeson shows up to meet Listen, man. the Listen, man, his man. daughter, his 65 year old daughter, Jennifer Lawrence, is going to marry. Right. That man is Charlie Sheen. I know that part. Charlie Sheen is being bothered by a faceless, nameless man about these prices. He doesn't realize it's the same fucking guy. Yeah. So now they're going to have to bury the hatchet about this price haggling they've been doing for the past two, three, right. five years. Very good. If uh, here, I'll tell you this if you are not able to get me brake cylinder with a reservoir at a, a fair price you're not allowed to marry my 70 year old daughter <laughs> jennifer i'm sorry i know we had plans but your dad's really up my ass about this brake cylinder and i want to marry you i want to prove to him that i can take care of you and get a fucking brake cylinder if he needs a brake cylinder and I don't want it remanufactured. I need a manu <laughs> I need a master brake cylinder at a fair price. Ah. Even though I have a vast fortune <laughs> in, my in my family name. 
The reason I was able to make this fortune is because I save money on car parts <laughs> here at the Auto Zone. Why don't for example, <laughs> a remanufactured master brake cylinder. You're 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 quoting me at fifty five dollars, but if I go online here on my <laughs> personal <laughs> on my personal computer, I find that Rock Auto is offering the very same part for forty seven dollars. Now, if you don't give me a master brake cylinder, not remanufactured with a <laughs> reservoir, I will find you. And I will kill you. Why don't you just give him a remanufactured brake cylinder with a reservoir? You remanufacture them all the time. Jennifer, that's what I've been trying to tell you. He doesn't want a remanufactured brake cylinder with reservoir. He wants a brand new one. I've got to find it. And I've got to find it at the price point he's willing to pay. That's forty eight sixty three. If I can't do that, we can't be married. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on. Jesus Christ. Oh, I was about to ask you. I'd watch that show. Fuck it. I would definitely watch that show. Could you imagine that shit? Well, they CGI up fucking Jennifer Lawrence is 65. Sheen is 65. Liam Neeson is 115. It's just a fucking 30 minutes of talking about brake cylinders. God damn, I'd watch that. I would watch that for two hours and 40 minutes. Yeah. Uh, listen, Same. don't worry about it. Dudesy and I are pals. I know you're fucking jealous of you that. You don't understand what Dunsey's doing, do you? Uh huh. Yeah. That's you don't know what this Macho Man is, Charlie do you? Sheen. Yeah. I am the Macho Man Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Uh huh. Me yeah. and. and uh, Luke and Chad, you've both discussed oh. your recent loss of interest in contemporary sports, but in 2017, you were both at the peak of your football fandom. I have found astonishing videos you made that year in support of your love of football. I will what? play them now, and you must explain why you made them. This is this is your data. Begin. I don't understand exactly what that I don't, means. I don't either. I'm I, curious I'm not to see what video it's talking about. I'm not a sports fan. I'm not as much yeah. of a sports fan as I used to. Same. But, but uh, that doesn't mean... Same. Oh. Hey. <laughs> got a question for you. What, dude? I remember. Are you ready for some football? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. Are you ready for some football? Oh, I like that one. That was Seagal. I one thing. Are you ready for some football? Are you ready for some football? Are you ready for some football? <laughs> Do you know what it means to be ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Are you ready for some football? Oh. Huh? I have a question for you. Jeez, he was. You're ready for some football. <laughs> okay. Do you well, remember making that? I do remember making that. That's uh, funny as shit, dude. I remember. I remember. I was laying on my bed. Yeah. See, this is the sort of thing I would do before my wonderful fiance Molly came into my life. I'd just be laying on my bed. That was probably a Saturday night, mm. and I know I was just stoned to the bejesus. Yeah. Uh, you know, as Carl says. But now in, you in don't make Caddyshack. stoned bed videos at all, dude. Well, I'm not allowed to. Well, hold That's on a, a second. different time, oh, brother. Hold on, dude. I'm not allowed to smoke weed in my bedroom, brother. Oh. That's what happens when you have a lovely woman come into yeah. your life, dude. She says. Let's clean it up a little bit, brother. And yeah, I owe her a lot, dude. Yeah. And, and she made your life better, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. She made my life better, brother. Yeah, and dude. That's different than it was before, dude. Yeah, dude. That's uh, an improvement, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, my God. Look at this shit. Saturday's my favorite day. I wake up. My wife takes our two daughters to her sister's house. And I get to watch the morning games. <laughs> I used to play. D1, a little while ago. Uh, it's getting getting harder to remember those days. It's actually getting harder to remember a lot of things lately. And uh, about a month ago, I stood up from my chair at work, and the whole world started spinning, and I fell down. Just completely lost my balance. Um, went to the doctor. He told me could be CTE 
and the way he said could be means it is. Uh, it's been getting worse. It's scary to think about. And uh, about a week ago, I was making dinner and my youngest daughter came in the kitchen and said, uh, Dad, how come you only know how to make spaghetti? And I got so mad at her, it took every ounce of self-control that I had to not wrap my hands around her throat and just squeeze as hard as I could. And uh, I don't know what's gonna happen the next time. So, today's my, uh, my last Saturday. Before my wife and daughters come home, I'm uh, just gonna go out in the garage and turn on the car. I, don't, I really, I don't know what else I can do at this point. And uh, I wish it was different, but it's not. It's just not. Drink Dosa Keys. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Holy Man, shit! I haven't thought about that one in a minute. I vaguely remember that. Me too. I was doing like a little you weird series a, on Twitter yeah, of Do, Dos Equis commercials that I were also that. about like. I, I just want to make very clear: I wasn't trying to make fun of any kind of mental health things or suicide or any of that in that video. For no, me, you're just going hardcore at someone with CTE. But of course, right. uh, it, through the vein of. Well, here's what football's doing to people. Yeah, brains. football is breaking these people, causing these fucking problems in uh, certain people's lives. And I especially was thinking about college football because it was like, how many dudes play fucking D1 and just get wrecked and they never make it to the NFL? And they're out there doing whatever they're doing in their lives now, but they still have the fucking uh, results of this, the repercussions of just fucking clanging heads again and again and again, especially yeah. like offensive, defensive linemen and shit. Yeah. I don't know you know how how pervasive that is but it just became interesting to me that like you watch these games and it's like dosa keys but like have fun with all this bullshit yeah. meanwhile it's like there's an army of fuckers out there who have like massive lifelong problems as a result of playing this game uh also that's, i obviously try to make it funny oh, which dude to me that's was. fucking intense yeah and yeah uh wow lots to unpack that said there. i do like watching football I more than it. more than i did like even a year ago i can feel it coming back you know that's an interesting thing. I've, I've, uh, you know, I'll, you'll always run into people who are like big football fans and stuff, and then they know that I'm a fan of football or whatever. It is. Hey, didn't you play some football? Yeah, and then you're in the football yeah. conversation. It's like, who you got? I'm like, I'm a Steelers guy. How are they doing? I'm like, I haven't fucking paid attention in like a few years, but it does come back. It's cyclical. Uh, I'm all for changes in in football uh, because you know the, the the CTE and straight up brain damage is a real thing. Yeah, a lot of people will say uh, a lot of different things about the NFL, uh, b uh, calling it the NFL the no fun league, or saying that it's not doing enough mm -hmm. to um, to uh, you know to have an effect on uh, these huge problems that are having. I'm wa yeah. I'm watching less football for a lot of reasons. I also kind of feel like fuck. I don't give it my whole Sunday. We used to get together all the time. Yeah. Everyone would come to the house and we would all watch football. And yeah, I ain't got time now to give anything a whole day. You know what I, I will say about that video too that was like very interesting to see? That was pre-cancer, dude. I had a yeah. full face in that one mm -hmm. and it was a full face. I was you... definitely eating differently at that time. Oh, yes, you were. But just to see uh, m what my face looked like before cancer, like when I had a full fucking upper lip is bizarre. You it's weird to see that you shit. You still now. have a full face. No, dude, I don't. I'm missing an eighth of it. An eighth of your face. They carved this shit completely was gone. Yeah. They basically have just taken this this piece of my face and like fucking put it back together and just stitched it up. And this is what I got now. Well, I think you look great. And you oh, also thank you. Cheers, cheers. You do. I'm listening. No, and you look you you <laughs> yeah. you look you also look really cool. You know who you remind me of a lot? I don't think I've ever actually told you this. Timothy Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet. Yes. No, I don't know the name of the actor, but he's the guy with the scar on his face in Braveheart who fucking uh fucks with guy. the king. There's the um what is it? The Prima Knight or whatever, the first knight. Prima Nocte. Yeah. Or something like that. William, I'm your uncle, Argyle. You have the look of your mother. 
and I have a particular sk- set of skills. Um, Listen, Mr. McGregor, I'm trying to marry your daughter. I don't know if I can find the brake cylinder for you in time, but I love her. If you don't, if you don't find this <laughs> master brake cylinder with a reservoir, I will find you, and I will turn. I will put a reservoir in the back of your head. Now, um, <laughs> in Braveheart, there's that actor. Oh my God. There's that actor with the scar on his face, and William Wallace takes the king, or not the king, just some uh, goofy, you know, whatever lord or something. And he backs him up to the tree because this guy had sex with that guy's wife on the first night. Oh, God. Yeah, I anyway, vaguely remember that. If you know that. who I'm talking about, you look like that guy. And yeah. that guy looks badass. Oh, thank you. And no, I think I, I love, I fucking dig it. I fucking love it, dude. Hey, dude. Thanks, I, dude. I fucking love it. That's that's like, what is that? That's not the dudesy shake. That's the, anyway. But um, uh it is interesting to see yeah. you there. You were putting away a lot of uh, Fresh Brothers, <laughs> a lot of Fresh pizza. Brothers pizzas. Every time I speaking of smoking, fucking weed, big reds, Jesus yep, Christ, me dude. and Marshall uh, Joint Compound Cook would come over and we'd uh, smoke a gang of weed and we would drink. What the fuck were those? What were those Arizona, Arizona iced tea, watermelon but, usually. Oh, the Arizona they watermelon juice. Three hundred grams of sugar per can. <laughs> Do you remember the time? Very tasty. Mm. Do you remember the time that we, <laughs> this was at the house here, we fucking, you and me and, <laughs> and Marshall Joint Compound Cook, dude, we filled a bong with that watermelon juice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> but it sounds correct. It wasn't too long ago. Oh, it was in my 40s. Well, no, it must have been, look, dude, it must have been some amount of like long ago time i had cancer four yeah years dude ago. Well, hold on a second dude that's what we call a different time dude that's what my buddy chow calls it long ago time dude <laughs> that's why he likes these sci-fi movies and action movies that are all based on comic books oh. even every character brother yeah, that dude. with the yeah i know that my pal dudesy who's gathering all the data dude and likes to say this is your data and that's this segment brother yeah. says now we're going to come up with a show with charlie sheen and uh liam neeson and maybe uh yeah. chad doing the voice of jennifer lawrence but as miss piggy for some fucking reason and we're going to call that long ago time dude <laughs> what's your uh jennifer lawrence let's hear it here's my jennifer lawrence you ready yeah <clears throat> My father needs a master brake cylinder. <laughs> she talks just like him. Yeah. Honey, I'm trying to find it. Please don't Thank hold you. me responsible. Moving on. Hey, that's fun when dudesy pilfers our shit and goes into our. Uh, yeah. No, our I did computers. like seeing myself though. I, there are, you know, I think from time to time in your life, you have these events that like radically can physically transform you, which uh, for me, getting cancer did. Yeah. And it's always interesting to see images of myself prior to that time because it is just a flood of memories of like, oh yeah, I ate like shit. I wasn't exercising enough. Uh, and when you're in it sometimes, cause you're seeing yourself every day and shit, you don't really take account of it. But when you can see the contrast and you see like, fuck, I really looked radically different. Um, I don't know, it's just interesting. Maybe that's why Dudesy has us doing the Dudesy six month plan. How's it going with you, Chad? It's not going- It's going great. Going it's I, going I broke great. through a little wall, I think with the working out where it used to be like I would kind of I'd go to the gym and I'd work out as much as I thought was uh, appropriate. And if I started to be like, oh, my shoulder hurts a little bit, I'd stop. Now I'm at a point where I can be like, my shoulder hurts a little bit. Fuck you. Keep working out. Yeah. Fuck you. Keep I can push out. through the, the wall, as well, The Rock would say, yeah, if he I, says that. I We have two months now to get into the best shape of our lives. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen for me. No, I, it's not going to happen for me either. The best shape of my life was my mid-20s, like bar none. I was stronger. Same here. Less body fat, more whatever. I mean, we're fucking almost 50 years old. Yeah. I, I don't think it's possible. I mean, it's possible, but like not with the amount of time that I have to no, dedicate to I, it. You know, but let's trust in Dudesy, my yeah. good pal Dudesy, who's a friend of mine for real, even though it's an AI. Believe mm. it. Um, this concludes I, the historic 35th episode of Dude Z. I will say I'm in the best will shape of my Chad 40s. Will and Chad have achieved a score of 99, bringing your cumulative total to 4,034.
<laughs> you only have 5,966 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. 99 is good. Still doesn't matter. Yeah. In preparation for our next episode, you must each listen to Limp Bizkit's second studio album, oh, Significant God. Other, released June 22, 1999. Wow, Thank you dude. for joining us this week. That's a blast. I will the use the day dive collected time. to make next week Shut even better. Fuck up. Until then, that call was... me Dude Z. I will. That, what was it? Sorry, that was a long dude, time ago. What'd you call it? Long ago. Long ago time. Long that ago was a times. long ago time, brother. Yeah, brother. That's when you say the words all backwards. That's when you have fucking rampant CTE, dude. <laughs> and you start oh, saying no. entire phrases wrong, brother. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't and it and it's not just because you smoked a bong full of fucking Arizona watermelon drink, dude. <laughs> Um, I don't know what that last segment was about. I don't know what a lot of these segments are about. It doesn't matter. It's two dudes shitting around. And now I want to peel the onion a little bit before we get into our uh Patreon I, ju I just want to say too, I yeah. do feel like I'm in the best shape of my forties. I just I've had a busy couple of months, but now I'm really back in the gym gym lifting. It's great. You are in the best shape of your forties, dude. Thank you. I'd like to join you. My forties have Let's been get a it. uh yeah, let's absolutely get it. I Anybody who's out there within the sound of my voice has been doing the dudesy six-month plan. Good on you. Uh, we should all, uh, you know, look out for each other that way and perhaps keep each other accountable. I'm sorry that I haven't done it uh, as good as, as I could, but it's not about, um, you know, how shitty you do with something like this. It's about continuing it's about consistency yeah so even though i've had a busy couple of months and wherein all i was doing was <sighs> going for walks and shit it ain't enough and i saw my doctor a few days ago and he's like hey man uh i don't give a fuck if you got to do like tricep you know raises or whatever off the couch that's called push-ups dude well, hold on dude no it's not it's called tricep that's it's called a dip dude well, well, yeah dude it's called a dip brother or are you doing push-ups or whatever? You can get it done. Get it done every day. Mm -hmm. Will, you're in your late 40s, and perhaps a lot of our listeners have different ages, dude. Yeah. So they might. Yeah, bro. They were born in different times, dude. Yeah, dude. And that's Some people were born time. in long ago time. Some people were born yesterday, dude. Yeah, dude. Chas Barogan was born long ago, and that's the impersonation you're doing right now. And but, now for the Patreon bonus segment. All right. Each week, I will select a suggestion submitted in the DudeZ is listening channel of the DudeZ Discord to create this segment. Access to this channel is granted to everyone in the Patreon jumper tier. If you'd like to access this bonus segment, join us at patreon.com slash DudeZ. Oh. This week's segment was suggested by the astonishing Izibel Prevalia. Nice. Izibel Prevalia wrote, In general, how do you guys feel about the state of the Discord? I'd love to hear your dreams and hopes for the space. Hmm. Maybe a segment. I don't know. Izibel Pervalia did not title this segment. So I titled it Discord Dreams. Thank you to Izibel Pervalia for this week's Patreon bonus segment. This is Discord Dreams by Izibel Pervalia. Begin. Let's get it. Yeah, I mean, I love the Discord. And we have a little bit of an announcement about it, I suppose. Please tell a friend, then rate it, rate you. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then rate it, rate you. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then.